Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. The European Commission warned Croatia, Italy and Cyprus today that they needed to tackle their excessive economic imbalances. Although Croatia was making progress due to a combination of reforms, favorable economic conditions and lower risks in the banking sector, the Commission urged the government to do more to boost structural reforms. Our index review uh, indicates that Croatia continues to face excessive imbalances uh, relating to uh, high uh, domestic and external uh, debt, and which is uh, adding that it's largely denominated in foreign currencies. Uh, 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 there is low uh, uh, potential growth, and also we see that in terms of uh, addressing uh, country uh, specific recommendations. Uh, Croatia has made uh, limited progress in addressing uh, country specific recommendations. So it's uh, important indeed that uh, government continues uh, to work and to address still quite substantial stock of economic imbalances. Today's report from the EC is in line with our expectations. It acknowledges the progress we've made on economic growth in 2017, our fiscal discipline and our efforts to reduce the deficit and public debt. It also, in part, acknowledges our reform efforts. Of course, it is also a warning to speed up structural reforms. The majority of Croatian businesses increased their investment activities in 2017, but 13% of them still have trouble securing financing. This is particularly common among small and mid-sized firms, according to participants at an investment conference in Zagreb today, organized by the European Investment Bank and Croatia's Central Bank. Private investment remains a key determinant of overall investment dynamics. And it, the private investment, still remains about 20% below the 2008 pre-crisis level. And a country like Croatia has to take this into account, using the good years of the post-EU accession boost to create the condition for long-term competitiveness and sustainable growth. Agrocor's crisis managers and creditors are holding two days of talks behind closed doors near Zadar in an effort to bring the parties closer to a settlement. The plan is to hammer out a settlement deal by April 10th or with a three-month extension by July 10th, the final deadline. Deputy Prime Minister Martina Dalic says that the change to a new crisis manager at Agrocor had caused a minor delay in the negotiations, but that they are in the final phase. Dalic says the only way to ensure that creditors cover their claims is to make sure Agrocor's business survives. As far as the opposition's initiative to recall her, Dalic said the move was legitimate but had an underlying motive. On the one hand, everything that the SDP is saying is surprisingly similar to the lies Ivica Todoric has been spreading on his blog. On the other hand, the SDP is taking advantage of this to turn our attention away from the serious internal issues that party is struggling with. Opposition lawmakers have collected enough signatures to initiate the recall of Deputy Prime Minister Martina Dalic, but have not yet submitted the motion into procedure. Mrs. Dalic is right when she says that this is the opposition's right. I will add that it is also her right to defend herself in front of lawmakers. We can interpret these public exchanges as a kind of prelude to that. But first, let's see if she has the support of the majority. After that, the opposition should be easy for her to deal with. Opposition parties are putting pressure on the government to explain why it is not sending to lawmakers a bill on the ratification of the Istanbul Convention. They have agreed to submit an interpolation, a mechanism that would force a response from the government. GLAS, the IDS, the SDP, the People's Party, GVZ, and two independent MPs have signed on to the motion, and most appears to be leaning in that direction. Furthermore, the hardline conservative independence for Croatia could also support the move to force the HDZ to take a definitive position on the international agreement.
We just like to call attention to the fact that the government is not doing its job. The Prime Minister isn't keeping the promises he made to citizens. As MPs, we have this option at our disposal and we want to use it. The Istanbul Convention is a legal framework with the most effective solutions for protecting women from domestic violence. It would give state bodies the authority to ensure these protections are truly effective. I have heard the Prime Minister say countless times that the HDZ is a Christian democratic party. If the majority of their voters believe the Istanbul Convention is unacceptable, then I think the HDZ should oppose its ratification. Defense Minister Damir Kerstichevit met in Budapest today with his Hungarian counterpart. The two countries have signed an airspace cooperation agreement that includes sharing radar information. The Hungarian and Croatian militaries must serve as a stability factor in southeastern Europe, the two ministers said. Effective information exchange requires that we strengthen and enhance our cooperation on defense. We did not bypass two issues that have been at the top of the agenda for two and a half years now, and they are the migrant crisis and terrorism. In sports, reigning champions Rijeka destroyed Dinamo four goals to one in Rijeka this evening in round 23 of the HNL. This was Dinamo's second loss in the second half of the season. The game had been pushed back from last month due to bad weather. Thursday's forecast calls for morning rain throughout the country. More rain is expected during the day, but mostly in the east and south. Skies will begin to clear in the west by midday, leading to longer sunny spells in the afternoon. On the coast, expect a moderate to high northwesterly wind. Morning lows will range from minus 1 to plus 3 in the interior and from 6 to 10 on the coast. Daytime highs will be between 8 and 12 degrees inland and between 12 and 16 along the shore. Sunny skies are expected on Friday and most of Saturday in the interior. Variable conditions will return on Sunday, bringing scattered showers. There will be moderate to high southwesterly winds reaching high gusts on Sunday. Temperatures will continue to rise, reaching their peak on Sunday. Dry weather is expected on the coast on Friday and Saturday. Southeasterly winds will pick up late Saturday, mostly in the north, and spread to the rest of the coast on Sunday. High gusts are expected on Sunday. Temperatures will also continue to rise daily. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.